Welcome to the section of regression. I'm really excited that we're really finally getting into machine learning algorithm right now. And so first part that we're going to look at is regression. In this section, what we're going to look at is, first of all, the different categories of machine learning. Uh, we're going to talk about the different types and how to actually make use of them and to solve what problem. I'm going to introduce to you uh, the scikit-learn library for Python. And this is the library that we will use predominantly for to solve all of our uh, challenges, the real world challenges that we're faced with. Uh, on top of that, we're going to start applying uh, all of the things that we learn on what we call Boston housing prediction, real life data, and just basically performing exploratory data analysis and then correlation analysis as well as feature selection to begin with for the Boston housing prediction. Now, the various types of regression machine learning algorithm that we will actually go through will be robust regression to actually pick out the outliers and also figure out what the inliers are. Multiple regression with using the stats modules. Uh, this is a general introduction for those who come from a statistic background. We're going to cover multiple regression as well as picking out the most important features. That's what's called feature importance. Uh, of course, we'll look at ordinary risk square uh, and also making use of gradient descent, which is a really important uh, optimization algorithm. And uh, we're going to look at regularized regression on how to restrict uh, your model so that it doesn't overfit. So this is going to cover rich lasso as well as elastic net. Uh, but the important part that I want you to know is that these, while this principle is predominantly applied to regression, uh, it actually will come back again and again when we actually start to talk about other machine learning algorithms as well. The same um, so-called principle and concepts apply across all of the different uh, machine learning algorithms, including classification as well. And we start slow to slowly move into polynomial regression, which start to fit models that are not linear and we're going to evaluate our performance or the performance of our algorithm as well because that's really the key part that is that we want to know how it will perform when it's dealing with data that has not seen before uh, typically you have a training data for you to actually train your machine learning algorithm but the important part is how does it perform when it's out of sample uh, I'm really excited about this part. I'm going to give you some gentle introduction or brief introduction on decision tree, random forest, some of the more state-of-the-art uh, machine learning algorithms such as Edibles. These help you to deal with non-linear regression, uh, non-linear relationship in contrast to all the other uh, regression models that were looked at. And finally, uh, we will also look at extracting the important features from using either random forest or Edibles for that purpose. Um, the other key components that we look at, not necessarily restricted to uh, the regression portion, is data preprocessing. By and large, for most machine learning algorithms, you do need to preprocess your data. Uh, it actually makes the assumptions that either your data is between minus one to one or zero to one. That's where the standardization, min max, uh, normalization, binarization, as well as converting your data from text or strings to zero and one. Uh, the reason being, most of the um, machine learning algorithm or library out there don't know how to handle strings. That's why we will make use of label encoder, uh, which converts strings to uh, numbers or binarize them. If it's only two numbers, uh, binarizing them to zero or one. And we'll also talk about one hot encoding uh, on how to deal with um, multiple class problems and uh, try to resolve the problem of if uh, if it's uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 where typically machine learning algorithm is going to put more weight onto 3 rather than 0. Uh, that's where we make use of one hot encoding for that purpose. Uh, we'll talk about some of the challenges you will face, uh, what's called variance and bias trade-off. Variance meaning there's a lot of uh, deviation or a lot of variability to your data or your machine learning uh, or your machine learning algorithms prediction bias means that is almost constantly wrong uh, well, a high bias model is obviously not good because it's never get it right 
a high variance means that you you can't trust it because it constantly uh, gives you signals that sometimes it's good sometimes it's no good so that's really you, you can't get any um, confidence out of the prediction that comes out of it um, this is the part that we're going to talk about validation curve and learning curve and how to deal with it uh, and also the finally we will make use of cross validations uh, such as holdout cross validation, K4 cross validation, for, and also stratify K4 cross validation. All of these are to help you to gain some confidence uh, of your model on how it's likely to perform when you start looking at um, real world data. Now, there's a lot of uh, contents in this portion, and really the approach that I've taken in this portion is to build up co concepts one by one, step by step. Uh, later on, when you want to, you can actually pop back to the data preprocessing, uh, look at the cross validation or the variance bias trade off. You don't necessarily need to come back to this portion just for the regression. You can also come back here for all the other components as well. So, with that, that's really the end of the introduction. Uh, I can't wait to see you uh, in the course itself. Thank you for watching.